Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's good to, to uh, see all of you. Uh, some I, I, I kind of remember, and some I've only heard of. Brother and you, family, amen. And so glad to finally meet them. Amen. Amen. But I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I have done all that I could in my uh, short years, growing longer. Amen. I'm just trying, I'm going to turn 41 this year. Amen. But uh, and I know someone, well, he's just young. <laughs> well, I believe for 20 something years, this is all that I know. Praise God. Praise I'm God. glad Thank God. that they said unto me, yes. let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 I'm so, I am honored tonight to step into this platform. I don't consider standing in anyone's platform uh, a, a just you know, mishap or anything like that. It's, it's a real honor. Amen. Amen. I know that I am protective of mine, just like any pastor would be. And so I don't count it lightly to be in this platform, Brother Seville's, tonight. Amen. amen. And of course, I, I really appreciate my son coming with me. Amen. Hallelujah. He had the option. He could have stayed home and hanging out with all everybody else. But hallelujah, he, he chose to be with Dad. Boy, amen. I tell you what, I swelled up a little bit. Amen. 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 When he said that, praise God, it made me feel good. Amen. amen. But uh, uh, I'll tell you what, hallelujah, the Spirit of the Lord is present with amen. us tonight. He is in the house. Amen. Amen. I don't want to uh, get to a place where I don't want to. I don't want to miss God. As I prayed and, and, and the Lord confirmed that I was going to continue on the will of God and preach tonight. Hallelujah. I, I, I mean, some men want to try to address God's will in a, in a very logical manner. I don't. Hallelujah. I live by faith. Amen. I still believe in the mystery of God, like Brother Seville Amen. mentioned tonight. Amen. I do. I believe that. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. If I ever get to the place where I don't, amen, then uh, I, I might as well pack up and just go back home. You're right. Amen. But I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. And it has been a wonder to see and feel the Spirit of God move. Amen. Amen. But I want to share with you on what's on my heart uh, tonight. But before I do, I want you to understand something. Amen. Just because he moved tonight means he can he has to move tomorrow. He can move the next day. He can move the day after that. Yes. Oh. yes. A lot of people come to the house of the Lord and when the Spirit of God moves, we get in a frame of mind, oh God touched me, I can go on for a couple of days. That's not the experience that God wants you to have, children. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to be an old country preacher. That's who I am. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm, I'm from Kentucky. All of my family is from Kentucky. Amen. My, my heritage is, uh, is from eastern Kentucky. So if I you hear Kentucky come out of me, that's what it is. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad. Hallelujah for the Lord. But I want to, uh, uh, to encourage you tonight to make the right choices. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I don't want you to think for a minute that just because God come by and moved on you, well, that's enough. Amen. I may back away. Can you hear me in the back? Amen. All right. Well, and, uh, amen. We're just going to get with it then. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. May not even need the monitor, brother. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just might just walk around and just yell at you for a little while. But I want to tell you something. It's all about choices. Yes. Amen. If we've been in this society long enough, and especially in the times that have come upon us in the last several years, we're going to recognize that sin is getting rampant. Yes. Where yes. sin doth abound, grace, grace, grace doth much more abound. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'm glad the Lord is stronger than that, aren't you? Yes. Amen. Amen. But oh, it, it has burdened my heart to know, amen, that there are some that have gotten slow slack. In their devotion to God. Mm. Oh, I'm not trying to browbeat you or try to hurt you this morning, but I'm trying or this evening. But I'm gonna try to get you to make the right choice for God. Amen. Amen. I want you to make the choice for God. Yes. You have to recognize a few things. If you want to turn your Bibles, you can to uh first Kings tonight. First Kings, hallelujah, chapter number 19. I'm gonna read, but I'm gonna preach to you just I'm gonna give you a preach, a pre-preach. Amen. If the Lord will help me. Hallelujah. But uh, if, if, if God never spoke to Moses, 
until Moses turned around and got interested in God. Do you know that? Matter of fact, it says that. I mean, Moses is a pretty good guy, I think. He had a pretty good heritage. He, I mean, his mom raised him. He took the right choice. He didn't want to serve in Pharaoh's court. But I want to tell you something. His experience with God was still lacking. Right. He didn't have a relationship. He had. He was a chosen one of God, which is uh, the Israelites. But I'll tell you, when he was on the backside of the desert, he wasn't where God wanted him to be. That's apparent, isn't it? Right. Amen. The Bible says as soon as he, he took those sheep up that hill and they let him feed over on this side a little bit, but the Bible says that Moses said, I will now turn aside and see. Yeah. Amen. He said, I'm making up my mind right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Tomorrow's going to be a different day. Hallelujah. Because I'm going to let God in my life like I've never let him in my life before. Yes, <laughs> oh, I feel a little better already. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to let God. Amen. I've been, I've been coming to church for a long time. But I think tonight, oh, Lord, I'm going to make a choice. Amen. Do something about it. Praise God. And the Bible says when he turned around to see this thing, while the bush was burned and it wasn't consumed, that was the moment that God spoke and said, Moses, right. huh? hallelujah, when you're just going to go see a fire, amen, you didn't expect to hear a voice. Amen. Hallelujah. When you thought you was going to come to fellowship me, amen, I'm feeling better right now. Hallelujah. Amen. When you thought you were just going to come and get a little warm by it, amen, God right here in this fellowship meeting right here tonight. You hear me? Amen. God wants to speak to you just like He did Moses, but He's wanting you to make a choice. Amen. There's a choice to it. Help us, Lord. There's a choice to it, young man. That's right. Hallelujah. I'm looking right at you and you know it. Praise God. Hallelujah. just felt like doing it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a choice to it. Amen. You know, like Brother brother Seville, man, I, maybe he should have preached. Praise God. I don't know. I've got to read my scripture. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Amen. But, but I'll tell you something. It's going to be a conscious decision on your part. Amen. To wake up tomorrow. Hallelujah. You're ready to serve God in a holy manner. Amen. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. It's going to be a conscious decision for you tomorrow to wake up. Hallelujah. Go to work. Amen. Hearing the voice of God. Yeah. yeah, hallelujah. It's going to be a conscious decision for you to let your steps be ordered by the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Are you good? Amen. Amen. Jesus said there's none good but God. Are you like God? Right. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, let me read this and get it, and I'll preach and move and get out of your way. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to know something. Hallelujah. Um, if, you, if, you, if you have fault, you can blame the pastor. Amen. He asked me to come. Amen. So, uh, But I, I tell you what, I believe in him. I do. I, we've been around each other several times. And I, I tell you what, the only thing I like about Brother Seville is his spirit never changes. Amen. Amen. I, thank, I thank God for him as a pastor here. Yes. And uh, yeah, we, life is heavy. Yeah. He said, Jesus said, He said, Oh, come on to me, all you that labor and heavy laden. Now yeah. you rest. Yeah. All right, how many is heavy laden? Uh, yeah. right, we feel it, don't we? Yeah. Life's heavy. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But the Bible says, Be yoked. <clears throat> that means He picks up the heavy end. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. He, he, you're moving, yeah. uh, somebody move in a house and move and use a U Haul or something. You got to pick up that big old dresser. Huh? Aren't you glad that that other strong dude's got the, the heavy end? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. God's got the heavy end on you. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Right. So, yeah, I know life's heavy. Amen. I'll tell you what, life has been a heavy. I, I have preached every night but Monday this week. Amen. I'm, I, I like preaching. Amen. I really do. But traveling parts I don't like. I'm just glad you're only an hour. Amen. I had to travel three hours Tuesday. Praise God. Amen. But I'll tell you what, it's good to be a Christian. Amen. Amen. Let's read this scripture. 1 Kings uh, chapter, nine, or chapter 19. And we're going to read in verse number 19. Okay. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 19 and verse number 19. Amen. The Bible says, So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he with the twelve. And Elijah passed by and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said, Let me go back again for have I done to thee? And he returned back from him and took the yoke of oxen 
and, and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave them to the people and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. Amen. Hallelujah. I've kind of already gave you my title tonight, but I want to preach on choices. Choices. Amen. Amen. You know, there was always that time when you got the multiple choice because you was, you was hoping and praying that the answer that was in one of those would jar your memory to, to the correct one. Right? Yeah. If it was 4, A, B, C, or D, you was hoping that you, you would read and go, oh, that's the one. Amen. But there's only two choices. Amen. I was, I was reflecting on some things where Jesus has said, one man would come to me when I was in Keys Rocks pastoring, and he said, he said, you know, God, he, Jesus, he contradicts himself. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, he said it's supposed to be, uh, and he teaches and preaches that he would come to bring peace. He said, but then in another place, he says he comes to bring a sword. Amen. Somebody's going to go home and I said, he did say that. Did you know what that sword means? I want you to make a choice. He's dividing the good from the bad and lets you have a clear option to choose what is right. right. Amen. I come to cause division. What's the division? For you to choose the right from the wrong. Right. For you to choose what's right and what is wrong. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, Amen. If we had more people that's filled with the Spirit, chose God over anything else, and walk in the Spirit, Amen. We'd have more people saved in the altar. Amen. Are you here? Oh yeah, come on now. Are you, you know I'm telling the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. You'd be at work and you just turn around and spit out, hey, you've had five husbands, and the one you want now ain't yours. Come on to the altar. That shocks somebody to death, wouldn't it? If you just told them the whole life story. God does that kind of stuff. Right. God still moves that way. God still moves on his people so that souls Choosing the right thing. Oh, right. Elisha was, was a man, hallelujah, full of choices. He was, Elisha was full of choices. As a matter of fact, he started right here. Elijah come to him and, and threw his mantle on him and, and tried to get his attention in some way. And he said, well, let me go back. Amen. If you can talk yourself out of anything of God, then guess what? You ain't going to get it. Somebody else will come along and he's going to get it from you. Amen. But he, he said, let me go back. And Elisha, thank God, was a man of his word. And he did all he said. And he come and followed the man of God. Poured water on the man of God's hands for almost ten years. Paul said it this way in Galatians 1.16. He said, when I heard the call of God, he said, I conferred not with flesh and blood. I didn't ask how I felt about it. Amen. I didn't ask how would I, how I was going to react. Amen. I let the Spirit of God deal with me. And I stepped out on faith. And, and I said, I'm going to live for God so that the whole world will know. Oh, glory to God. I'm telling you right now. I'm asking the church tonight amen, to make a choice for Jesus. Amen. Because if we do, we'll see a revival. Amen. amen. Long time. 
You come to church and you can come here and you can cry. And I'll tell you what, it's good to feel the Spirit of the Lord, isn't it? Oh, yes. I mean, don't, did you love the Spirit tonight? Do you still love it? Oh, Amen. Amen. I'll tell you, when we stood there, I've never heard that song. Amen. That must be a northern thing. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> tell I, I, brother, brother Lauren Ho or Larry Hoover is our song leader. He, he breaks out some of those things. Sometimes I'm going, <laughs> my mates don't have that note. And, uh, and you know, so I, I, I just, I really enjoyed that song tonight. And as we worshiped, I thought, Oh God, there are people feeling the Spirit tonight. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. But are you going to feel it tomorrow? Jesus. Praise Jesus. The Lord. Yes. yes. That's 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 my question. I can't. I'm a pastor. I found out something, Brother Fiddler, about pastors and evangelists. Evangelists, they gotta have it hot all the time. So they come to the come to the church and boom, man, you get fired. Because the pastors, they 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 don't do that. They they kind of heat it up over time. And, you know, hopefully it'll be hot by the time we get done with this sermon. <laughs> Praise God. We just, we just keep on turning up a little bit. Amen. I, I, I want you to live for God when the pastor's not watching. I want you to live for God when, when, when you're at the gas station. I want you to choose God to fill you up now so that when you go home this evening and go to bed, you can honestly tell yourself... Hallelujah. I'm going to wake up just fine. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. They, they, they can't, some people just can't make up their mind, though. I'll give you an example. Agrippa said to, to Paul, he said, Almost thou hast persuaded me to become a Christian. Right. See, he had a lot of power. See, if, if, you've got, if you are giving yourself too much power tonight, then, then, then you will talk yourself out of it. That's right. Yes. That's right. You will go home and appreciate what you felt, but you will not try to feel it tomorrow. He said, Paul said this, and Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I am, except these bonds. I would that you all together give it to it. I, hallelujah. Amen. I, I would that if, if we ran into you tomorrow at Walmart, amen, it'd be hard for you to not say, oh, glory to God, hallelujah. Amen. It, it'd be hard for you to not to shuffle the feet a little bit in the middle of the aisle. Praise God just to say, man, God's good. And he, hallelujah. Oh, yeah. I, I prayed for Paul. I prayed for some Pentecostals people before in the middle of some public place. And you know what they do? Amen. Sure as the world. Hallelujah. I lay hands on bow my head and before I know it, they're going. <laughs> God forbid somebody sees this action by our head and pray. Amen. I'm telling you the truth. Hallelujah. Give us somebody in this hour. Amen. I'm telling you right now, we've got a lot of things that are happening for us. But the, the, the devil's getting mad and the world's getting louder and prouder. And they're, and they're starting to, oh, praise God. I'm telling you, my God's on, in, on fire right now to touch somebody's life. Yeah. We had a privilege. This year, I don't know how you feel about it, but me and my wife, and, and there was some in our church, and, uh, and then uh, the, the Combs family out in Maryland, they met us there uh, uh, in downtown, or down in Washington, D.C. for the March for Life. Amen. I appreciate I love life. Yeah. Don't you? Yeah. Amen. You go there, and there was, there was half the people weren't saved, but they were moral and they wanted to stand for it. And, and, and I've never been in a place with so many Catholics in all my life, I'm telling you. I mean, tell, they, yeah, every one of them, I mean, at least 75% of them had to be. And, 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 and so, but, but the, I'm going to tell you something. While you were there, you, you barely heard any cuss words. You heard people talking about the goodness of things and, and life, but then, then, then most of the time, I'd say good uh, 60, 75 percent of the time, you hear talk, people talk about God. Praise God. <laughs> oh man, it was great. Hallelujah. And we got we marched all the way up there and to, to where the uh, where the uh, the court the Supreme Court was, and, and, and there was a few. There was like six of them that stood out there saying that we were stupid, but they weren't allowed. There wasn't one vulgar sign except for them. The next day was a march for abortion, and you know what? They were cussing, and they were loud, and they were obnoxious, and they were they were they were calling everybody names, and they were getting mean and hateful. You tell me which one, which crowd you want to stand. Right, right, right. Huh? And and you know what? Media didn't want to touch that stuff. They didn't want to touch March for Life. 
They, bad, they, they, they went ahead with the other one all they wanted to. You heard all about that. 650,000 people at the March for Life. But nobody bears their word about it. This world is choosing one of them. Where are the Christians? Yes. Where are the holy ones? Right. Oh, hallelujah. We, we've got more <laughs> than they do. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes. I'm telling you, we can preach and teach until we're blue in the face. But I'll tell you what, until you understand it, Amen. That man stood with uh, with, with uh, Elisha on that day, and then he, he was scared to death. And he's like, look at all these people against us. Look at everybody. And they started, and the world started to pick at him. And fear started to get in his heart. And you know what Elisha, Elisha did? He laid hands upon him. He said, Lord, open his eyes. Amen. Amen. I want your eyes to be open tonight. Amen. I want you to feel the Spirit of God like you never had before. I want you to get devoted like you never done.
But did you know heroin, it hits the bloodstream and if you overdose just an ounce, lights out. There's no conscious thought. It's over. My heart breaks. And that young mother, or that mother, no, they're not young, that young lady died, and that mother and that father, hey amen. I tell them all the time, I don't, I, I don't, I'm not the kind of guy that's going to just go up and dash somebody's dreams. But I'm telling you right now, I go to them and I tell them, God loves you. God wants you to make the right choice. I don't tell them otherwise. I don't tell them anything else. I just say, God wants you to choose right. Amen. 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 Oh, I'm telling you, the world is out to destroy. But I'll tell you what, it's not the world. Do you know who's in charge? Do you know who's the prince of the powers of the air? Are you hearing me? It's the devil. He's alive and well. He's ready to conquer and make people fail. Are you hearing me? But we've got to get to a place where we choose. Yes. Life's heavy. Right. The mantle of God is heavy. Oh, brother. The, when we choose God, hey man, it is a great responsibility. Oh, greater than your family. Oh, brother. That's right. Greater than your home. Greater than your church. Greater than your job. Yes, sir, brother. Yes. Come on. It's a great responsibility. Oh, oh, yes, sir. right. Hallelujah. It's a challenge. Yes. Romans 13, 14 says, But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the loss thereof. Amen. Elisha had a life. Huh? Yeah. He had a, he had a, he had a life. He had, he, he had a direction. Dad and mom still alive, so dad and mom probably still on the farm, but he worked Because one day it'd be his. He'd pass it down. And give it to his boy. Elisha had a life, and he chose the mantle. Matthew 16, 24. You want to know what the mantle is? I'm preaching on the night. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross Amen. and follow me. Hallelujah. Amen. It's heavy. I almost brought a cross tonight. I'm going to pull it out of my pocket, put it on my shoulder, try to emphasize what I feel like people think their cross is. Preach it, brother. Come on. <laughs> I said it the other night when I was preaching. I said, like, if you ever heard of Mike Roberts, amen. <laughs> I said, this is the cross of Jesus, just like Mike Roberts. He got the high pitched reach. And he goes, that is not the cross of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm telling you. Yeah, that ain't it. Amen. That ain't it. That ain't the cross. You just put that little tiny thing, amen, and feel like you're doing somebody doing the job. I saw somebody, uh, I don't remember where, but he was carrying the cross, but he's carrying it the front way. And I say, he carried it wrong. He ain't got a cross, but he carried it wrong. It don't make sense. You're going to have to carry the cross the way Jesus said you're going to carry it. Amen. That's right. When he put that mantle on Elisha, Elisha recognized the burden of the cross. Amen. This is before Jesus' time. I understand that. But I'm preaching to you about choosing. That's right, brother. Choosing the cross. Well, people are really going to say something to me if I start acting that way you're talking about, Brother Rose. It's all right. Hallelujah. I got saved when I was in public high school. Oh, God. And I stood before all my friends and walked away from the dirty jokes. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. Carried my Bible to class at times. Making, trying my best to make a decision for Jesus. Amen. There were some of my friends that didn't turn away from me immediately because they had family that were in church. <laughs> they could relate a little bit. Right. Hallelujah. You never know who in the world is going to relate to you, your Christian experience. Come on, right. 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 You have no idea who's watching you. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. When you choose what right. God wants you to choose. Amen. Amen. The cross covers cross clears and cross clothes. They've been hiding in the cross. Hallelujah. It clears our self. It, 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 it kills out self. 1 Corinthians 1.29 says that no flesh should glory in His presence. Yes. That's what the cross does. Right. Amen. I don't want you to see me. Amen. Sometimes I had to fight that. I still fight it. Well, I remember one time, and I'm going to just 
tell you, I'm going to be a little open to you right here. I'm trying not to step on this because I know you pray on it. <laughs> I'm trying to jump over it or what I have to do. But I remember being a young man. And I was trying my best to be as godly as I could be. You've heard this before. <laughs> and I went home and I started to fast. I didn't fast food. I didn't fast water. I fast, I fast talking. And I got real quiet. And I, just, I, I just would watch everything I say. And I know you're supposed to do that. And I, don't get me wrong. I'm not, you'll, you'll hear me in a minute. And I started to say, I don't want to be seen. I don't want to be... In, I don't want to go there. I don't want to do this. I, I, want, I want God to get the glory. I'll just get out of the way. I'll be quiet and I'll sit over here. And, and if you've ever been around me, you'll know that's not me. I love people. I love, I love God's people. Amen. I love the sinners. Sure. Amen. Amen, brother. And so after three days, after two days, my dad said, John, what's wrong with you? And I said, oh, dad, I'm just trying to be quiet. I'm trying to practice Quiet. Brother Lee, I'm sorry, I, mean, I, I don't stand still, so I probably. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I, 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 he said, okay, okay, that's fine. So another day passed, and I was still doing the same thing. And my dad, my dad's a very practical man. He's a very godly man when, and, and, when, and when he uses the scriptures, you know. And, and, and finally, dad comes to me and says, are you sure you're okay? I said, dad, I told you, I'm just, I'm just trying to fast. I'm trying to be quiet. And, and, and just trying to just keep it all in. And he, my dad looked at me and he said, John, he said, God don't want you to change who you are. Amen. So I had to fight that. I had to pray that through. People say, oh, he just wants to jump up there and be seen. Well, I had to fight that. Because I'm going to be seen. Amen. I want to see the cross. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you. Praise God. I want to see the cross. Yes, Lord. It is my choice. It is my heart. It is my love. Amen. To live for God. Amen. God, God is not supposed to be boring. Amen. If you're living life for God and it's boring, then you're doing it wrong. I'm telling you something's wrong. Amen. If you haven't had some excitement today because you spoke out for Jesus. Amen. I'm telling you, we need to get to a place where we hide ourselves in the cross. Because in the cross, your sins are covered. In your cross, how do you Oldest, uh, longest memory. Oh, 
And there's probably things you remember. You remember, right? From years, you probably remember stuff years, years, years ago, right? And, and, and you kind of remember how it was. Is that all right? Huh? And I guarantee you, He had his old ways, huh? Yeah. Some people don't like to. There's probably, uh, there's probably somebody out there right now don't like my preaching knife right here. <laughs> I'm sorry. Amen. You have to, amen. Listen to me, Pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. He get back on the platform and he'll tell you and he'll clean it all up. I'm sorry. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> it, 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 the way it used to be, we we play that game so much yeah. that our heart goes there. We can't get into service like we need. Oh, you get this? Yeah. We, and we normally preach this message because of sin or heartache. But I'm telling you right now, you'll probably get over the heartache and the sin if you can just get your head out of the past. Yes. You hear me? Yeah. You know, Elisha, he left the farm. I don't think he kept thinking, oh, no, who's in? Oh, no. no, he cast his goal so far ahead, I can't wait. Amen. For yeah. God to use me as a prophet. Oh, okay. I can't wait till God gets a hold of my life. I got to quit. I'm telling you, I'm doing too long here. Amen. I can't wait till God moves on yeah. me yeah. so that I can be used of God. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. He, he cast it far out there. I mean, I'm telling you, people, when I was a young man, 18 years old and first saved, I sat in the front row in the amen corner, and when that preacher said, a turn your Bible, Corinthians 
Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, yes. this was mentioned tonight, he is a new creature. Amen. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Can I get somebody to become the piano? Hallelujah. I don't, the sisters. I don't know who's, who plays. Thank Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. On the piano, if you would, I, and we'll close here in just a moment. In Elisha's experience, he had he received salvation. We can relate to Elisha's experience. Lord. Salvation. Mm -hmm. He surrendered. He sacrificed. Yes. And when you met Elisha, there's no doubt in your mind he was sold out. Hallelujah. Perfect. It only takes a person five to ten seconds to be with me to know that I'm a pastor, a Christian, and a husband. Hallelujah. Twelve seconds to know that I'm a dad. <laughs> yeah. Y'all, yeah. did you ever meet Rodney El Eldridge? He, go, he used to go to Taylor Mill. He came out to our church for a while. And he's a great guy. And he's in politics. Well, he was. And this girl come up. He, he's an older guy, and he turned white-headed early. But he still had that distinguished look. And, and uh, this young lady came up to him in one of the offices, and she said, she said, I just love her hair. And he said, yeah, he said, my wife does too. And you want to see my kids? And he just pulled out the ball. <laughs> and all these kids pictures. Hey, man, she had talked to him. I said, man. <laughs> if you choose what's right, You'll do what's right. Amen. Yes. If you have a hard time choosing and doing what's right, oh. what would you say, brother? Something wrong. Something wrong. Amen. Something wrong. Yeah. Something wrong. It just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Two different things here. There's blind zeal, and then there's intelligent zeal. God don't want blind zeal. Blind zeal is the seed that fell on stony ground. It flourishes, comes, it springs up real fast. It's all, but ultimately, you're going to lead to failure. The sun will make it. Hard times will come, and you'll you'll. This is why it almost seems like you've got to come and feel the Spirit again and cry over it because you didn't believe God could touch you again. I'm going to tell you something. God will always try to touch you. Amen. It's His will. Praise God. Yes. And you know what that touch is? It touches that wooing. That, that's what we felt tonight, that wooing. Yeah. He's, he's wooing you to the altar. Because He's saying to some. He's not saying to all. I hope it sticks this time. Thank you. I hope tomorrow the weekend starts for you if you're off work that you don't do anything that is unpleasing to God. Amen. Thank you. Intelligent zeal is the conscious choice that edifies and glorifies God. Where's your zeal? Conviction always deserves an earnest answer. Would you stand with me? Let's fellowship meet and I understand. What better way to fellowship with God's people than to become more God? Uh, am I right with that? I, 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 have, re I have come to the conclusion <laughs> And I refuse to be somebody I'm not. Some people may not like that, and I understand. I, I, I choose to be a Christian. I choose to be the Jonathan Rose that God called me to be. If you ignore conviction, it won't knock as hard next time. Knock comes on you. I hope he's knocking that hard. 
we're that place where we know we can lean on God just the way the world is. I hope he's not been that hard on you. Because if you ignore that knock, it's going to be so hard to lose And eventually, you possibly won't be able to hear it. had to convict me a whole lot <clears throat> probably the main reason he had to do that is because I'm not afraid to try anything I'm not a very shy guy as you can tell I'm not very scared of a whole lot of things about 300 spiders crawling on me at the same time I'm not scared <laughs> snakes I can easy to tell just kidding <laughs> But I want to choose Jesus. Amen. I want to choose God. Joshua 24 and 15. Joshua says, Choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of the Amorites, or he's talking, actually, he says, first, the first thing he says, well, you're going to serve the gods of your fathers? That's the used tos. That's the has beens. He says, or are you going to serve the gods of the Amorites in the land where you now live? I live in the town of Carlisle. I'm not going to act like the people from Carlisle. I'm not like a Christian. We're right now in the town of Likens. Am I, am I correct on that? I know sometimes we say Likens and we're just, oh, that's you know, some people, I mean, I'm close to Boiling Springs. Where, where is your church at? Is it Lancaster? Well, I thought it was in Lancaster. And then Brother Jonathan Edwards, John Edwards, he's down. But is he close to me, isn't he? I thought he was close to me, sir. Okay, that's it. And then Brother Dismore down in uh, Great Cup. Great Cup. Great Cup. Thank you. That place. I never could say that name. Sir. <laughs> Or are you going to serve the gods of your surroundings? He says, Joshua goes on to say, As for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. 